Hey guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So, before we get into it, just wanted to let you guys know in case you haven't seen it already, I have a new series called The Impact Report where I basically do news and rumors every week, usually drops on Saturday. I'll uh, leave a link below for you guys. So, on to the January 4th episode of Impact, the first Impact of 2018. Uh, pretty good show. Uh, action-packed um we had let's see one two four championship matches um and yeah let's get right into it uh so we open the show with dan lambert and american top team outside the arena and uh lambert tells them that he doesn't need them tonight and he gives everybody the night off so a little fishy to begin with Right after that, we get right into the first match, which is uh, Trevor Lee defending his X Division Championship against Ishimori. Um, so this was a good match. A couple of good spots here and there. Um, yeah, not much else to say. Uh, so obviously, Caleb Conley was at ringside, and he made his presence known pretty early in the match when uh, Trevor distracted the referee and Caleb... Uh, Kind of beat him up outside the ring. Um, there was a really good spot where uh, Ishimori went for the uh, backhand spring kick um, off the ropes. But when he went to do it, Trevor Lee, I guess, grabbed onto him and almost hit him with a Spanish fly. It was a variation of it anyway. It was a cool spot. Um, so they exchanged... Offense back and forth, a couple of near falls, and then Ishimori was able to hit the 450 splash for the win. And we have a new X Division champion, Taiji Ishimori. So, um, yeah, that's not really a shocker here. Uh, he's been doing good work in the company. Um, I don't think Trevor Lee is done with the X Division championship yet. Uh, possibly maybe moving up on the card. Um, or what I would like to see is Caleb and Trevor maybe into a tag team just because, well, I'm sure everybody's noticed that Impact's tag division is kind of limited, but, uh, yeah, so new X Division champion. So backstage, Desmond Xavier congratulates Ishimori on his victory. He says, last time we were in the ring, I beat you, which was during the Super X Cup, well, it was for the Super X Cup. And uh, he said, round two will be for the championship. And then they shake hands. So that will be a match I'm looking forward to. Uh, both these guys have grown since they've first, well, they first had their match, which was all the way back in August, um, which is funny when you think about it because that was only, what, two or three sets of tapings? I think two. Um, so we go to Conan. He's in his hideout, and uh, he <laughs> threatens to cut off Sammy Callahan's balls and throw them into a fire after Callahan had uh, hit him with a fireball a few weeks back. Um, he smashes a beer bottle and says he wants to get violent. So I'm sure that leads to something in the future. So we go backstage, and uh, Mackenzie's interviewing James Storm. Uh, she asks him about his match later on tonight, and he basically says that he's going to finish Dan Lambert. And he said, Lambert isn't just fighting Storm. He's fighting everybody in the locker room because Storm represents Impact, basically, or because he is Impact. Um, yeah, the guy has been there since they first opened the doors, I guess, so to speak. Um, up next, we had the uh, Grand Championship with EC3 defending against Falaba and Matt Seidel. So I think this was the first time they've had a triple threat match for the Grand Championship. Um, much like a lot of people, I'm not a huge fan of the rules involved in the match, but, uh, the triple threat kind of added a little bit of, uh, interest. It piqued my interest, I guess I should say. Um, so for the first round, Falaba dominated, uh, basically taking out both men. So he won that round. And then the second round, EC3 kind of beat up Seidel and Ba outside the ring. So he won. <clears throat> round two and uh round three this is where things obviously started to get interesting so uh Falaba had gone up to the second rope to hit a downed Seidel when EC3 comes in and pushes Ba off the top rope he falls down 
hits the ring steps awkwardly and lands on the ground. Um, Seidel and EC3 battle back and forth. Seidel sets up for the shooting star press, but Falaba starts to get up on the apron, kind of distracts Seidel. Clock is ki- counting down at this point. Seidel hits the shooting star press, goes for the pin, and time runs out. So because of that, EC3 retains the title. Um but I like this was really good, the ending, just because it kind of continues the storyline of EC3 saying that he chokes in all the moment, you know, all of his opportunities. And this was the perfect example of it. Good job, Impact. So we go to a commercial and come back and find out that during the commercial break, Moose had just entered the arena and was attacked from behind by KM with a steel chair. So good stuff there. KM's looking out for his boys, American Top Team. So then we uh, get an interview. Mackenzie's interviewing Allie and asks her how she feels about being the number one contender to the Knockouts Championship. Uh, she says that Gail told her that it was her time, and sh- if it is if it is her time, she's just getting started, and then as soon as that happened, she was going to say something else, and then Laurel Van Ness blindsides her and throws her into like a storage trunk. And that brings us to the Dan Lambert versus James Storm match. Um, this was something. So, obviously, basically, the loser leaves impact. Um, no disqualification. As soon as the match starts, American Top Team comes out. Um, they kind of all take turns beating beating up Storm. Lambert constantly goes for the pin, but Storm kicks out. Uh, so Storm is able to gather himself, gets everybody else down or out of the ring. And he has Lambert in the corner. KM comes out from the back with beer bottle in hand, smashes it over Storm's head. Storm's down. Lambert goes to pin. Two count, he kicks out. Lashley and Lambert were having words, so it's kind of Storm kind of gets back up on his feet, and two of the guys hit him over the head with the beer bottle. Lambert pins him. That was it. Um, Yeah, it was something. So then, go backstage, and Storm's talking to everybody in the locker room. He's greeted by everybody, and they say their goodbyes. And it was just like, I don't know, this guy's given 15 years to this company, and this is how they kind of send him off. But I'm pretty sure he has a a uh, goodbye speech at some point in the tapings, so... Uh, up next, we had the debut of Chandler Park. Uh, he was facing John Bolin, so this was pretty good um, because obviously he was very happy to be in his first match. Uh, so Bolin controlled the majority of the match. Um, I think Park had gotten a little bit of offense in, so he was going to talk to Joseph on the outside. Um, Bolin comes over, kicks the rope, hits... Uh, Chandler between the legs. Chandler and the referee go to the other side of the ring. Bolin starts yelling at Park. Park punches him in the face. Chandler takes advantage, rolls him up, and that was it. So it was a pretty good debut for him. Uh, Then we get an interesting little promo from Matt Seidel, and uh, he's basically saying that the Grand Championship is supposed to be about pure wrestling and not this nonsense of EC3 taking, you know, advantage of things and counting down the clock and... Well, it's just smart moves by him. Um, but he says EC3 can't beat him one-on-one, and then he goes into a tirade of saying that we should get rid of the judges and change things around, and he says, like, uh, Impact needs a change, and I'm going to change it or something like that. So uh, I'm guessing this feud is not over, which is good because they started doing a good job after the match they just had. So um, give them both of them something to do. That's pretty much it. And this was kind of a downer. So we have the championship match between Eli Drake and Alberto El Patron. Um, so I don't know if they had announced it previously that this match was going to take place at another show. Um, I might have just missed it, but uh, this took place at WrestlePro, I guess, a couple weeks back in uh, New Jersey. Um, yeah, this was something. The, the arena was pretty poorly lit, so it was, like, uh, very dark. Um, it was kind of a cut-and-paste match because they started out and they brawled right into 
up the stage and into the audience, and it was so dark you could barely see them, and then they battled outside the ring some more. They get in the ring, battle back and forth. Drake hits a superplex, then hits the gravy train, goes to pin Alberto. He gets his foot on the rope. Eli grabs the championship title, goes in the ring. Uh, he goes to use it, and then Alberto ends up using it. I think, yeah, yeah, he did like a face buster onto it, and he got a two count, and then uh, Eli pushed El Patron into the ref. Ref's kind of dazed, and then Eli hits El Patron with the title belt, and that's that. So, like I said, it was... It didn't say anything in their promo that they were going to do it out of the Impact Arena, but, yeah. I guess I was expecting a little more, but that's all right. Um, then we have the main event, which was LAX versus OVE. And if LAX loses, they have to leave Impact. Um, so as soon as LAX made their entrance, they came out first. Uh, OVE attacked him, blindsided him, basically. Took him out. So match gets underway, and they control a good portion of the match. Um, st- uh, LAX started getting some offense in when uh, Santana hit a moonsault but was caught by OV and then he turns into a nice DDT um, then he finally makes the tag to Ortiz uh, after that OV sets up for the all seeing eye but Santana interrupts it uh, Santana goes what well, Dave gets knocked down Santana goes to hit him with the, probably a splash but Jake Christ is on the other turnbuckle and they both jump at the same time, and Jake hits a uh, super cutter, which was really cool. He's done that a lot um, in other promotions. I think this might be the first time we've seen it in Impact. Um, so Ortiz and Jake were in the ring battling. Um, Dave gets hit with a super kick outside the ring. LAX hits the street sweeper, and they are new tag team champions. Um, the crowd was super hot for LAX in this match. Um and after the match, they actually went into the crowd to celebrate. But uh, it's so funny that they were, I guess, considered the heels in the beginning of this feud. And then all of a sudden, once Sammy, Sammy Callahan came in, they kind of flipped everything. Um, but yeah, no, overall, it was a, a pretty good show. Um, like I said, the Eli Drake and El Patron, just, I don't know. I, and maybe this could just be a spotlight, because I know they're working relationship with Russell Pro, I believe is pretty new. This might have been the first time they've aired anything between the two. Um, but otherwise, it was a really solid show. Uh, I think we have two weeks left of the tapings from Canada, and uh, the Orlando tapings start January 10th. So I believe either the 18th or the 25th will be the start of the new tapings. But uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts, what you guys thought of the show. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.